welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. It's the Analysis Days episode, and, uh, well, what a season we've had, honestly. I'm... It was one of those weird ones where at times I felt like we were doing poorly, uh, and at times in the league I think we kind of were, but we were still picking up results. But you know how frustrating it can be. I mean, it's definitely better than losing, that's for sure. But when you know that you could do better with the games you're playing, and you don't quite get the results that you think you want. But that being said, our media prediction was still only eighth this season. So I think we're still above and beyond our performances, really. And the fact is, getting to the Champions League quarterfinals along with that is like a double whammy of good stuff this season. And it gives us plenty of things to build on for next year. Now, we're about to get stuck in to some beautiful, gorgeous analysis. And the best way for us to get those sort of stats for real life football is going to be with the help of the One Football app. Picture the scene. It's match day. You're at the game, but you don't know the lineups. It's two o'clock. They're waiting to be announced, but you just don't know. Ping on your mobile phone. Up pops the notification. Bam. You now know the lineup for your team and any other teams that you're following from around Europe and the rest of the world. And you'll also be able to get live score updates from other games around the league and any others that you follow too, as well as take part in fan voting. So once again, a massive thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video, helping out the channel. And of course, you can download the app for free with the link in the top line of the description. How I want to prioritize transfers this summer, given that we've got a big old wedge of cash, is to obviously focus on strengthening the areas, but it's also key to focus on the two different styles of play that we have to make sure that there is options for us. So obviously with our slightly different style, we have an advanced playmaker sitting further up, which I think Glavash actually probably does better than Cuarto, but we'll have a little look at that later. And obviously that right-hand side is definitely going to be a not a problem area for us by any means, but an area that obviously we haven't really focused on too much because we've been mostly prioritizing right wide playmakers really sat down right here so granados really has no familiarity further up that's not to say i couldn't train him there and i might be tempted to but that he's probably one of the players that could suffer this summer with that as a problem uh Siki's contract is also up next summer and he's probably our highest paid player so we'll have to have a look at that and see what the situation is with his contract see if we could get him down a little bit i didn't realize that sass signed him on a free either that's insane money they were doing stonks before I even got here. So that's pretty good. So yeah, let's just take a little look at things right now. Um, just jumping straight into the team detailed stuff, I suppose, really, is the best place to start with this sort of stuff. So average possession-wise, we were sixth. But I feel like next season, we could grow heavily on this one, given how possession-dominant our style of play is with this new tactical style, which we won't be using all the time. Uh, I still don't think it's particularly functional. Although, it's hard to say. Maybe it would have worked in those big games too. I just think that it will certainly create some more defeats, uh, you might say. But sixth best overall, I'll take that. Headers one, we're always relatively low on that one, it seems. Headers one ratio though. Oh, okay, that is a little bit lower. Usually we're low on the headers one, but decent high up on the headers one ratio, but it is what it is. Yellow cards, 76. Foggy had 123 and four reds in there too. And Sampdoria got eight red cards. Wow, there's a lot. Look at the red cards. I mean, we got three, which is way more than normal for us, but the whole league seems to have just got proper dutty. Eight red cards for Sampdoria, seven for Juve as well. Um, six for Spal, obviously. Uh, Genoa obviously got one of those against us, uh, as per. But yeah, three for us, not superb. And I'd like to maybe cut that back a little bit next season, but it is what it is. Uh, Form-wise, it's kind of irrelevant at this point. Uh, Goals-wise, seventh best goal scoring uh, output this season. But look at that, 12 corner goals. That's better. That's what I want to see. Us really maximizing set pieces. Particularly as towards the end of the season, we were starting to score a few more goals from open play as well. It bodes well for next season. Um, you can see that we definitely weren't one of the highest scoring teams in the league, but usually our defense is kind of what makes up for that a little bit. Expected goals for, interestingly, we were actually sixth on expected goals. So it seems someone, I think it's Juve, not Juve, it's Inter, overperformed a little bit more than we did, uh, it would seem. But that's fine. We're sort of in the, in the conversation. That's the real quiz right now. Lazio, how on earth they managed to be so far dominant on that? But then, then again, they were actually the top scorers in the league as well. They just seem to concede a lot, would be my guess. 12? Ah, that's why. That's why their XG is so high, because they have 12 penalties this season compared to our three. That right there is worth like another 10 XG on top of everything else. Uh, so one thing we don't do as much as some of the other teams is win penalties. But more this season than last year, it would be fair to say. Cross completion, not bad at 20%. Now, I'll be interested to see who those come from. So we'll definitely be clearing, uh, having a little look at that. Cross is completed as well. is nice and high towards the top. Better Vento. They're weird. They were like this last season, or not last season, the last time they were in the top flight, I swear they were, where they just had some really odd standout stats and just couldn't do much else. But 12 goals from corners, double anyone else's, superb. Uh, and not all from Milivojev either. Hodorino got a bunch of them. Uh, some of them were just scored by like, there was, we, I think it sometimes counts the second phase as well. Uh, like when the ball drops down to someone else, LeBear got a couple, uh, Siggy got a couple. That's good to see. Direct free kicks, uh, still just the none for us, but we don't have the best free kick takers. Indirect free kicks though, three and two of which were in the same game it's it's better could still be definite room for improvement on that one but 
with corners being so functional for us, it kind of outweighs it a little bit. Uh, pass completion as well, not too bad in sixth place. Passes completed overall, seventh place on that one too. Click our chances is pointless. Shots for. Yeah, we haven't had as many shots as other teams in this league, but I think that will change uh, with this new, more aggressive style. We will just be having more shots. Shots on target, up to sixth on that one. We're sort of right around where we want to be, really. Uh, shots on target ratio. Again, Benevento, they're so... They just don't get enough shots, it would seem. That, that really is the situation. Conversion rate, yeah. That's definitely something to look at for next year. Shots per game, we were definitely down on this quite a lot, but I think towards the end of the season, it was we were regularly exceeding all of these numbers, which is a good sign. Fouls against, we win a decent amount, which is good. Dribbles made were obviously not dead last, but fairly low down because we don't really do a lot of dribbles, which is fine. Possession lost, ah, not bottom this time. That's a good sign. Possessions won back should be pretty high for us too. Concessions though, second best defense in the league. Now, not even close to Juve and certainly nowhere near our defensive record of last year, but I will sacrifice that if it means that we get to a look at our defensive setup. That's way better. Four corner goals conceded isn't ideal, but look at that. Not one from an indirect or direct free kick is exactly what I wanted last season. I think it was like seven on indirect. So that's a good sign. Expected goals against? Fourth best. Right in there with basically everybody bar Juventus. We were in this nice little pack. So definitely one of the best defences in the league. We still sort of conceded a bit less than we should have done, but it was within the realms of like uh, possibilities. Uh, four goals conceded from corners is still one of the worst. So we can have a look at that. That may have come from when I switched tactics around and we I didn't have my proper setups in. So there's definitely that as a factor. Uh, wow, three conceded from direct free kicks. What about indirect? Yeah, we were f the only team that didn't concede a single goal from an indirect free kick in the league this season. Well, whatever changes we made, Sure as shit helped with that one, that's for sure. Clean sheets, 15. Certainly not what it was before, but we're still right in the mix, which is good. Fouls made. We don't even commit that many fouls, weirdly. We just get a lot of yellow cards. Tackles one, 10th highest. Eh, we should be... Ooh, okay, that's definitely something to look at, isn't it? Blocks, we're generally quite low because we have the ball quite a lot. Possession one, not the top, but we're right up towards the top, which are kind of, I'm all right with that because it kind of offsets our possession loss stat. Uh, clearances, middle of the road. Interceptions, we yeah, middle of the road again. Penalties conceded, only two. That ain't bad. Uh, I feel like we conceded more than that, but it might just be me taking Europe into account. Whereas for Ossinone, I mean, 11 penalties conceded. Were they all to Lazio? That's where Lazio have been really good this season, really, isn't it? Or have they? Uh, where are Lazio? Oh, no, actually, they conceded five. Shots against, they faced the least shots. We haven't faced that many, though. Shots on target against, same kind of situation, really. Average attendances aren't super important. Uh, transfer spend as well. We've actually made £10 million. Uh, <laughs> that is staggeringly good. We're actually up on... We're, we're on a positive value on transfers and salary per annum as well ninth highest in the league like just incredible um just or is that the other way around actually is that net trans i can't remember which way around that one is Does that mean we spent more than we made or not because it, it's this screen can be a bit weird because on the next one it shows it is red which makes you think that it's actually we spent more than we i don't know it's hard to say but regardless the fact that we came third this season whilst once again spending a third the amount that milan were spending more than a third like the inter and we're overperforming based on our salaries too. But keeping wages down is always one of my favorite things to do because it really just frees up so much money for you to spend elsewhere. Uh, I wish our stadium was bigger, but now that we've got a bit more money and you can see our lowest, I mean, look at the attendance. That's so tiny. I might look into extending the stadium or trying to get the board to do that. Um, that's the lowest attendance in fairness, but still our average attendance of like 17,000 is very, very low for a team that are playing in the Champions League. We need to be better than that, but that's pretty much what not maxed out, but our stadium's like 20,000. So not even that, actually. It's like 19, I think, isn't it? That's something we can definitely look at. Now, how much that would cost, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's always a tough one with things like that because we obviously want to spend the money on squad stuff. But this could help us in the long run as well by extending the stadium, having more fans in for European nights, just selling more tickets to games anyway. But what I'd say is we're not even filling the stadium we've got currently, which is surprising. <laughs> but I guess they're just not interested in watching us draw nil-nil against Foggia. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it, eh? So let's look at players. I'm curious to see who's really high on the things that kind of matter. Yellow cards. Uh, Pavlish with 12. It's still not like it was. That's not too bad, actually. Um, that's kind of what I expect from it. It's sort of par for the course, to be fair. Red cards. Obviously, Contreras had one. Constantinou had one. And there was someone else as well. Blessing had one in the Champions League, but that doesn't count here. Man of the Match Awards. Quarto still got six. And Milivoy have got five. So that's interesting. And Lebert even got in there. Incredibly, with Siggy as well, despite Siggy playing a lot less games. Uh, different. Wow, look at that. Man's covering 15 kilometers on average per game. Although he didn't actually play a lot. So that, yeah, these are mostly skewed towards subs. Alden Perez, though, that's uh, a lot of ground covered. And Cesari as well really gets gets about a bit. Christian Bush, top of that, no surprises there. He's fantastic. Both Milivojev and Hodgerino, really high up on average rate. You'll notice no Cabrera, but then he hasn't played as much this season, in fairness. Uh, Uriarte on headers one. That's good. Good to see him up there too. Possession one. 
nobody. Considering we win a lot of possession, it must just be spread around the squad quite a lot. But at least there's nobody on this one either, so it's kind of a bit of both. 34 goals for Barish Aslan this season. This guy's record for Roma is absolutely filthy. 100 goals in 137 league. I mean, to be fair, when you look at his stats, how has he not got England caps? Like, for real, how has this guy, 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 not got England caps? with the, that kind of record but sure uh rafael bustos as well was phenomenal this season too um 33 goals this season and he's not even got good finishing the composure is so i bet you frigero has that's actually he's got worse composure but he also scored less goals but it's it's definitely interesting to see that the strikers with the best composure rather than finishing seem to be the real dons of this league what about Gianarelli? uh although actually his composure is only 14 but then he also scored a considerable amount less than everybody else here, like 10 less. So it really does drop off fairly quickly. LeBaire with his 12 goals this season in the league. It's not bad. He's actually got 15 composure. Definitely something we can get to work on, though, potentially. What's the move to a big club, Max? Play well for us first, then think about that, eh, bud? He also lacks good decisions, too, which could well be a problem for him as well. Expected goals, Bustos, the highest in the league at 25. Uh, Frigerio as well. All three of those guys will cut above everybody else as far as just... They are the three best strikers in this league by a comfortable margin. And you might think, well, oh, maybe you could sign one of them. Yeah, it's not going to happen, though, is it really? Like, there's just no way that a player of these these kind of players are going to join us when they're, that's the kind of value they have, let alone how much they would actually require for transfers. These guys are just completely off the radar of a team like us. But that's fine. We have to accept that. We need to find our own version of those guys. And maybe LeBaire could be that guy, uh, given a full season. You can see that he was the 20th highest XG, but he did well overscore it, which is nice to see, I suppose. 144 <laughs> shots. That is insane. They were just peppering people with shots, and which shows, really, 82 shots on target as well. Although, Piccoli, you'd think would have more goals, really, given that he's been hitting the target about as much as they have. A shots on target percentage. Granados, LeBaire with 62% is very, very good. And that will suit him well next season if we can get him a few more chances. So pleasing on that one. Conversion rate, not super important. Shots per 90 minutes. Wow, Esposito shoots a lot. And we don't at the moment, but we will. I, I have plans. Assists per 90 minutes. Granados on there. Candido as well. He's gone a bit under the radar on his assists. How many assists has he got? 11. He's been quite... Oh, by the way, I've extended his loan for next season because of this exact reason. Um, despite the fact we're using an inside forward there, he still seems to be able to do the job completely fine and get assists for days, despite his poor crossing, actually. It's the only thing he really lacks in that role is his crossing ability. But as an inside forward, it's slightly less important. So I feel like it actually, with his long shots being a bit poor, though, does make him slightly more effective, potentially, there, because he's not having to shoot as much. Uh, sorry, not having to pass as much, potentially, or cross, rather, I should say. So exciting things there. Where are we looking here? Uh, key passes. Actually, this should be kind of interesting. Granados on there, no surprise. Yeah, it's the only one. Uh, key passes per 90 minutes. Again, Christian Bush is ridiculous. Uh, click out chances is pointless. Passes attempted. We probably won't be on there. No, that's fine. Across his attempt is gone. Christian Bush does everything for Lazio. The sooner he gets out of this league and is bought by Barcelona or something, the better, to be honest. I think he is their key player, as we well know. He is just unstoppable at times, to be fair. Uh, let's see. Defending now. Uh, what about tackles one? Yep. Pavlish. Nice. It's good. He's still doing a good job in the midfield. Not being, like as imperious as perhaps he was when he first came in but i think we're better as a res we're better overall regardless so i'm happy with that uh, tackles one ratio wow siggy has n that's incredible over 13 games played i mean it depends on how many tackles he's actually won but the fact is he's won every tackle he's tried to win that's kind of nuts actually adiko publish is right up there on tackles for 90 minutes as well mistakes leading to goals nobody good signs key tackles uriate brilliant he's had a really good year defensively uh, much better than I thought you had, actually. Key headers, I'm assuming him and Milivojev are both in there together. If it's a Hodak, though, right up towards the top. Didn't stop him from losing Max LeBaire for the goal that cost them their game, though, did it? Eh, 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 eh. Interceptions for Vinicius Jr. is extremely high. Wow. But I think he's one of those players that's going to start to lose a bit, a touch or two a pace over the next couple of seasons, potentially, as well. Blocks, Jan Bruner. Nice to see. He, that's going to be a very interesting comparison, actually, between him and... Um, Cabrera this season because there's a decent number of minutes for both of them to know the difference essentially so uh goalkeeper this stuff just doesn't really matter that much unfortunately so uh, I think the main thing now is to just head straight over and have a look at our proper comparisons because that's where it matters although before we do that I do just want to show you the guys that are coming in in the summer you already know about Michal Chea because he's here but there's another guy coming in on a free from Inter that I want to show you now and this is he this is Leasio now 68%, you might look at that and go, he's not superb. He definitely does have some flaws to him, for sure. Um, now, because he came through at Braga, he doesn't count as non EU, which is perfect. But the key thing for me uh, is the problem is he's left footed. And that's why I, I wonder about we might have to retrain him 
Um, originally, my plan was bring him in, train him on the left-hand side, because look, 17 crossing, 16 dribbling, 17 acceleration. Pace isn't amazing, but it's still 14. He does have a bit of injury proneness, but we'll just wrap him in cotton wool the same way Marco Cuarto does. But the simple situation was he was available for free. And I thought like taking a punt on him, to be honest, for a free transfer with a player of some of these outrageous technicals in places, I felt it was worth a crack. You know, we'll see if we can figure out a way to use him properly. We will figure something out. But at the very least, I think it's a player that's got sell on value. Be curious to see what his value comes in at when he actually joins us. So I'm still happy to do the deal, really. So again, shipping, robbing more players off of Inter. Left backs. Here we go. <laughs> it begins. Bruna versus Benjamin Cabrera. That's really the only battle here. The others, Michelchad never played that, and Constantinou maybe played that once or twice. Now, Bruna has played a lot more minutes than Benjamin Cabrera, but he's also seven years his junior, and I think that's important to remember. So we'll see how he stacks up. Interceptions, worse. Uh, tackles, worse. Tackles per game, worse. Team conceded, though, interestingly, slightly higher. He is worse in the air, but he does have better cross completion. So that's definitely something that's worth noting. Uh, he makes more key passes and he dribbles a bit more. Uh, his assist per game is twice that of Benjamin Cabrera. Uh, we score more with him in the team and win a tiny bit more points. Got a bit more XG as well, but that's not per 90 minutes. So it, it's a tough one, really, in the sense that some of the defensive stuff, Benjamin Cabrera seems to do better than him, for sure. But it is interesting to note that even in spite of that, we still seem to concede less with him in the team. So I don't think it's as big a deal as I thought, perhaps. And uh, I'm still willing to completely go with him for next season, um, particularly as he's a big investment that we made in a player like Jan Bruna. So I want to give him the chance to flourish. And he did still get a decent number of assists this season. Seven uh, overall. Was it seven? Yeah, it was. I, I wondered if it was excluding some stuff. I think next season, though, playing as that wing back, we might see a bit more out of him, to be fair. So I'm excited to see what he can accomplish in that role. If he could just pop a few of these up a little bit more. But it's weird, though. He actually does have decent-ish tackling. But hasn't Cabrera got better tackling than him? It's actually worse. Interesting. Obviously, mental attributes can help with that one as well. So, still content with our left-back spots uh, for now. But Benjamin Cabrera, I think his contract is up at the end of next season. It is. So, it's something we're going to have to look into in the summer. And if I can find another left-back, I'd be tempted to maybe swap him out for Cabrera. Sell Cabrera now, get shitloads of money, bring in another guy on the cheap, and just keep rotating that to continue building money. Because even though we've got decent cash right now, there's no reason for us to stop doing our methods with the finances. Because then you don't have money. You know, if we start getting complacent with our financial style right now, then in a couple of years' time, we'll then have no money again, and it sort of defeats the point of building it up in the first place. So, content with that spot, but still think that we could maybe look for someone. But left-backs are just so damn hard to come by. It is outrageous. Right, let's look at right-backs. I mean, this one is an absolute no-brainer, really, isn't it? Milchea, better, better, better. Though, actually, interestingly worse on that one, so that's definitely something to remember. Um, Constantinou is better in the air, but he's better with his... Uh, he makes more key passes, more cross-completion dead on the same there but we actually win more points interestingly with Constantinou in the team so that's worth noting as well but I just something about me just really likes Michal Chair and also we do have Dino Sadovic now that he's back in training again he didn't get any minutes for us this season next year I feel like he will get minutes and I think he's back in training yeah and I think there is definitely a bright future for this guy but oh, he, was he injury prone before or has he picked that up since I wonder if that injury has caused the problem or we just didn't know about it until now the thing is Right back to ten a penny. They're so easy to find right backs. There's about three more that I've got on my shortlist, just in case we need to pick out another one. We sold Belder, so maybe more depth in this role wouldn't go amiss, to be honest. I think that's one of the areas in this team that we're not incredibly strong in. So it would be nice to try and find someone there, but it's certainly not my priority. I think my priorities are very scattered this summer. I actually quite like a lot of our squad, so it's kind of hard to find strengthening spots, which is a good position to be in, because it gives us a chance to just look more generally and try to find talented players in good value deals, which is a nice position to be in. So I'm actually quite fine with that. Let's look at centre backs. This is I'm interested to see what Rogerino is going to be like, comparatively speaking. I've said this every time, basically every time, uh, every like analysis video now with Sassuolo. Can he push his way into this team? Or is he always going to be that guy who's just a really reliable backup? Because those are the guys. He's still played nearly 1,800 minutes this season. So interceptions. Uriate, I mean, Milivojev was the best, and, but Rogerino was better. And that tackles one ratio is staggeringly good. It's not like he wouldn't have won that many tackles in that period. He, he's just a tackling machine. And to be fair, the 16 tackling... Then again, Uriati's got like 18, hasn't he? Yeah. So I don't know about that. Um, Rodorino, those are some good numbers, though. Really, really useful. Better defensively with him in the team. And he's... Well, he's actually not as good in the air as the other two, but he's right within par with them. Uh, key passes as well is kind of irrelevant for centre-backs, to be honest. Um, team goals per 90 minutes is very high. Look at this. His XG's pretty good as well, considering the number of games he's played. That, that's a pretty decent amount. Uh, Uriata, you'd have expected a goal out of him this season, but it doesn't have to happen. Milivoyev's been pretty much bang on what you'd expect, and Rodrigo's been better. 
God, it's a tough one because Uriarte clearly has done good defensive stuff for us this season. But look at Rodriguez. I just... Whoa, we've got decisions to make for next season, but I'm just so glad to have these three lads that we can rotate in and out. I wouldn't mind a fourth one, though, just in case. Just in case we do get those injuries, because at some point, we're surely going to be down two centre-backs. Whether it be through injuries or suspensions, it's going to happen at some point. And I do wonder if just getting another, like a 20-year-old centre-back that's probably worse but with higher potential, just to come in, do that job for us, and maybe not play many minutes, but just be in this team, just to give us that tiny little bit more depth. That might be an area that I want to maybe look at this summer. But I'm extremely happy with our three centre-backs. They performed brilliantly this year. And uh, long may it continue, to be honest. Central midfielders. Mostly looking at the de the defensive ones for this particular play. Uh, but we'll see. So I'm mainly comparing... Oh, it's hard to say, because really, because Contreras has gone out on loan for the second half of the season. There's really no point in comparing Dinko and Pavlich to anybody, because nobody else has really played that role this season. I'm mainly looking at... Oh, it's such a tough one. We're really comparing Hewitt and Cesari most of the time, because Glavash would have played further forward. So will of Cuarto. Pavlich wouldn't have played in that role and neither would have Milivojev. And the same with Granados. Hewitt and Cesari. So Hewitt, better interceptions, which is good. Tackles one ratio slightly worse. Tackles one basically the same. Team conceded basically the same. Although Cesari definitely has that aerial threat about him, which is good to see. Uh, key passes as well. Considerably higher than Chris Hewitt in that same position. Interesting. Very interesting indeed, actually. Um, I wonder... I wonder in I, I'm just thinking about this now. If there was an opportunity, if a huge bid came in for someone like Chris Hewitt and we could make incredible money, particularly as he's a non-EU player that could go abroad, potentially, for huge cash. If that was an option, I might be tempted because I feel like, once again, we can keep recycling the value. Though, Hewitt did show some quality towards the end of the season, and that's worth noting. His XG is actually not bad, and he has overperformed it slightly too, which is good. Um... We do score a bit less with Cesare in the team, but our points one is actually slightly higher. Um, he's also underperformed his actually quite considerably. Just doesn't hit the target anywhere near as much as Chris Hewitt. Maybe I'm overthinking that there, and I think Chris Hewitt has had a good year, and I think he will flourish more in this new style of play. I've noticed him getting much, much better performances more recently. Uh, I don't know if you can see his form. Let's just look at the form stuff for Chris Hewitt. It just feels like more recently, there's bigger amounts of XG in terms of chances for him falling in games, although we have that one there. I do wonder if he's going to get more chances in matches more recently. Obviously, got the two goals in that one, but they were both long ranges. I just see him running into better positions more often. So maybe that would be a bad idea, actually. Um, so we, we will see. The chances are I'm probably still going to pick up a centre midfielder in the summer just because there's probably going to be one available for dirt cheap. And I just do that because, again, I'm always thinking about making money in the future. So I'm actually really, really happy with our midfield at the moment. Right, attacking mids. I want to, basically, this is Glavash versus Cuarto. I want to see a proper comparison of how they've done. Glavash is here. And Cuarto is directly underneath it, which is very helpful for this particular comparison. They've played almost identical minutes, which is even better. So, interceptions. Cuarto better. Glavash much, much better in the tackle. Uh, but interestingly, Cuarto does win more tackles. But we do concede quite a considerable amount more with Cuarto in the team. That's interesting. Um, interestingly, Glavash better in the air as well. Isn't Glavash like six foot tall compared to Cuarto, who's probably also six foot tall, isn't he? No, he's six four. Wow. That's interesting that Glavash has been so dominant in the aerial challenges. Um, cross completion, identical. Key passes, Glavash, slightly higher. This is the thing. We'll do another comparison properly in a second as well. Uh, assist per 90 minutes, not dead even at all by any means. Glavash definitely slightly coming out on top. More goals scored, slightly higher PPG. Uh, his XG is higher, but he has scored less goals. But that would probably come from the fact that I believe he's missed three penalties this season, which means I'm not going to put him on pens next season. Missing three penalties in a row in the league, or in games that matter. Like, he started off fine, but he has now conceded quite... that stopped scoring them. He does shoot on target a lot more, uh, and is hitting the target more with his shots as well. One thing I just want to look at, as far as... Because, obviously, with this new style of play, we're playing an advanced playmaker, and passing of 17 and vision of 17 is pretty excellent. I just want to see how Cuarto stacks up to that one. Um, to be honest, where is he? Marco Cuarto. So you can certainly see that Cuarto exceeds in certain areas, whereas Glavash ex exceeds in others but for an let's just see actually for a straight up attacking midfielder on attack which is what we use on the default sort of system bam so dribbling very good but finishing is kind of tied first touch is dead heat glavash better on the long shots passing slightly better technique is better mm, seems like cuarto seems to benefit more on the mentals but even those are not spectacularly better than Josip Glavash. but what about as an advanced playmaker and i think this is where glavash might really start to dominate this particular comparison Dribbling, much better. 
First touch the same. Passing, two better. Technique, three better. Anticipation, a little bit worse. Composure the same. Decisions, tiny bit worse. Flair, better. Off the ball, slightly worse. Teamwork the same. Vision, much better as well. Agility, better. Hmm, it's interesting. It really is very, very interesting indeed. I feel like out of the two, if I'm playing that advanced playmaker role, I'm picking Josip Glavash. If we're playing the other style of play that benefits a left-footed player as well, I'm picking Marco Cuarto. But it's good to have those two options. They're both fantastic players, uh, both of whom have still got at least two years, three years, in fact, on their contract. So that's good to see as well. I'm totally stoked with having both of these two around. Uh, when, I made, when I made the tactical changes, the last thing I wanted to do was remove the opportunity to have an attacking midfielder because we have such good attacking midfielders. That aggression could definitely come into play as well at some point. Um, he does have 16 penalties and decent composure. It's, it's very interesting. I guess the finishing is definitely a factor, but that's good penalty taking. Hmm. Maybe he's just had a poor season from conversions and maybe I should give him another chance. I don't know. It's hard to really say, but... They've definitely both had fantastic seasons. To score 25 goals combined between them from both playing in the same position. Like, it makes you think, if we played a full season with one of them in there, would they get 20 goals? It's hard to say. But they're both fantastic players. And I think they'll both find game time next season for us, no doubt, because of rotation options needed as well. But I think that Cuarto suits more of our old style. Galavash might suit more of the new style because he's just better as far as playmaking, which is what the role suggests. So, so happy with those two, to be fair. Right, okay, now it's time to look at left-sided players, I think. I want to compare the left side, because this is a bit of a, a weird one now. So, Candido, Rahiri, Harry, Manana, and Kudos. Obviously, we did have Martinelli as well, but he's gone. This is a, uh, this one's going to be very kind of curious to me, because I want to see how well Rahiri, Harry, Manana could do in that role. I mean, actually, tackles one, better. Interceptions, better. Team conceded, definitely better. Headers one, better. Cross-completion, though, is way, 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 way worse, considering that he actually has better crossing than Candido, by a considerable amount as well. Um, assists per 90 minutes, way, way worse. Candido does take some set pieces sometimes, though, worth noting. We score more, we win more points, his XG is far higher, and Blessing's actually massively underperformed his as well, because he just cannot hit the target to save his life. Hmm. Now, for an inside forward, though, then again, Candido did a lot of this whilst playing in that role later in the season. 11 assists and 7 goals from that role, whereas 1 assist and 1 goal from Blessing... And that assist was in the first game of the season. He didn't get a single assist after that. Hmm. Didn't actually play as many minutes as I thought he did. But he's not had a good year, to be fair. And I do wonder... And he is actually wanted by someone too. CSK in Moscow. So hard to say. It's one of those players that if a good enough bid came in and I felt like I could replace him, I would probably take the money. Particularly as a team like Siska could be offering extremely good money for a player like this guy. Because he's actually very, very good. It's just, maybe just doesn't quite suit what we want to do. I don't know. Maybe it's just that the player traits don't suit him and our style. But, I mean, maybe we'll give another chance. There's a few players in this team that I could see leaving in the summer were the bids to be right. And he is potentially one of them. Particularly as, if even if we got his value, we would double our money on the deal. But I think potentially, if he's wanted by them already, there's a chance that they could be willing to pay even more. Now, I wonder if he'd actually want to go to Siska, though. Uh, a lot of our players have been offered bids by Russian clubs in the past. Big money, too. Uh, Merlin Kelly, Flans, they've all turned down the contracts in the past. So it's definitely a concern of mine. But we will see. Um, but you can see we're a bit light on this side, particularly as Kudus as well will be leaving this summer. So that's another, what, 80, 74,000 pounds off the books for Mohamed Kudus this summer. So we're going to have even more wage budget available when he leaves. And there's a few more, too. Marcus Paolo, another 80 grand gone this summer. Th that's huge amounts of wage budget that are going to be freed up for players that are just never going to want that kind of cash. So I think a new contract for Siggy is very much on the table, even if it is going to cost us 100 grand a week. I just like him having around the club. He's the club captain. He's a talisman. He does all my dirty work for me when I want to talk to players. It's useful to have that kind of thing, and team leaders can be very important. The last thing we want is a player revolution and whatnot. So let's check out the right-hand side now. Uh, this is going to be a bit skewed. Let me just set it to midfielders as well, because obviously Granados... So, I mean, Bahiri Hamamanano is just kind of irrelevant here. Lombardo is kind of my interesting one here. Uh, tackles one is definitely worse than Granados from a defensive standpoint. But then, when Lombardo played there, he mostly would have been playing towards the end of the season when I was occupied. I mean, look how much better he was as an attacking midfielder on the right than a normal midfielder on the right. He definitely does a better job. And the 21% cross completion is pretty damn solid, but worth noting... Granados as well, 28% is pretty damn good, but he does take set pieces, so hard to say. Key passes, both very, very good indeed. Lombardo loves the dribble, though, way, way more. We score more with him in the team, and look at the PPG. His XG as well. 
that's worth actually that for me right there is probably a, a very telling stat he may have only scored one goal but look at how much more chances he's been involved in despite having played 673 minutes compared to 3,000 for Granados. Now, again, the role they were occupying is definitely different, but what I would say is, I think in this new style of play, this right wing position is going to cause havoc in terms of the sheer number of chances that they are being involved in. I bet you it's almost recent games. Look at this. 59, 18, 18, 67, 36. Although this was a bit further back before. That was a friendly, in fairness. Um, but it was Atalanta was the first game we tried it. It just... He seems to constantly get chances, whereas when he played before... Not that we can see it, actually. But I tell you what, I think there might be something to that because you know how low our players are often on XG. And the fact that he's managed to accumulate so much so quickly suggests that a good player in that role, either him or Siggy potentially, could do a fantastic job. What's his finishing like? He's got 10 finishing as well. Uh, lacks the decent crossing, but incredible dribbling. Lovely physicals as well. Team player, ooh, not so great on that one. But he does like big matches. He's consistent. He's resolute. Uh, runs with the ball through the center, which... He's both good and bad. When you play him on the right wing, it does kind of cause problems sometimes, but it also finds that he does tend to just open up space by driving into the middle of the pitch, and it forces someone to come and press him, and he does find those balls in behind sometimes. Uh, hasn't actually got an assist from doing that, but nevertheless, it's interesting to me. Um, but uh, the right-hand side is definitely an area that I will look to probably bring someone in anyway, because otherwise we're going with Lombardo and Siggy Jonsson and Granados, who can't even actually play further up. Now, what would he be like further up? I mean, he can play there technically, but like, I mean... He has the attributes for it. He does lack the speed, though. And that's that's the biggest problem here. Does have great composure, though. I wonder if he could be retrained again uh, to play in this right-hand side role, or whether he'd be better as an option, honestly, as a backup to someone like a Glavash playing through the middle now. Would he be more suited to this role now that it's a, a supporting advanced playmaker with his good passing? Does lack a little bit of vision, though. But he's a very good player and has great decisions and determination, too. Does try tricks, but the flair is okay enough. So it's hard to say. There's definitely good options in this team, though. Right, let's do one last little check. Have a little look at the striking options. Now, so let's just do a comparison anyway between Siggy and Max. Uh, yeah, so Siggy played 1,700 minutes. LeBear's played nearly double. Siggy intercepts a bit more, and his tackles one ratio. Ah, must have lost the tackle in Europe. Useless, Siggy. Does make a lot more tackles. We score a bit. We concede a bit less, though, with uh, Max in the team. But he's better in the area, Siggy. Cross completion, narrowly better, but not by much. Pass completion, or rather key pass, is definitely slightly better. Uh, assists as well, slightly better. We score less with him in the team, though, and Max, we do win more points. And you can see that we've Max has got a decent XG in the end, and 14 goals this season is by far his best return for this club. And he's overperformed the XG as well. 62% shots on target compared to 39 for Siggy as well. He shoots more. He scores more goals per 90 minutes in general. This must be his best performance, best season ever for us, right? In fact, it's not even close. Uh, six goals in the league he got last season, nine in total. This year, he got 12. Um in almost the same number of matches. He's doubled his goal-scoring output. That is a very good sign about what's potentially to come for Max LeBaire. And maybe we're only just starting to see now the true quality that this lad has to offer to us, to be fair. So all in all, I think my plans across the summer are going to be quite generalized. Just try to look for value in positions. Even though we've got the money, and if I see someone I just desperately want, we've got the cash there to make that deal work for once. Because a lot of players I've just been like, that's oh, just too expensive, we can't do it. We might be able to do it this season around. That, and I do think there's some areas to drum up some extra cash, because we make so many good transfers that we're generally making profit on almost every deal now. So that's a good sign. Hopefully we come back with a squad next season that I think can compete. And I think with the right signings, we can do. And there's still plenty of options for loans as well. Candido's back this season. I like him a lot. I think we can strengthen and just get a bit more depth now. I'm happy with the way we want to go forward. Uh, we've got exciting youth prospects coming through, like Ramon, there's BG, there's Quan. There's a lot of options in that team as well. There's uh, is Nocelli, or Patelli, that's the one. Plenty more players coming through. Even uh, Richard, what's he called? Richard, Pascal Richard as well, the young Frenchman. Banging in goals for our under-19 side. So that's a good sign. They've both won their leagues as well, under-20 and under-19, or under-18. I can't remember which one it is. Regardless, doing well. So that's a good sign as well. And yeah, the board are happy with that, finally. Anyway, I think that's about time to wrap this one up, I suppose. We may as well do it at this point. Um, Word of the day. We didn't do one on the last one. I actually totally forgot. Word of the day today is going to be penalty charge notice because I was a silly billy and got myself a fine for driving in a bus gate in Cambridge uh, on a road that has always been traditionally, you know, a road because I'm not going to start ranting about it, but fuck me. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow with a transfer window episode. And uh, this one feels like it's going to be a big one. So if you've enjoyed it, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be cool too. I stream on Twitch, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Go follow as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow for some transfer goodies. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.